Man's entire family was involved in the murder of a Clayton County woman. And now they're facing charges. This case is gruesome. Atlanta News First anchor Tori Cooper joins us live from outside the Clayton County Police Department. And Tori, police say it all started with a woman's boyfriend? That's what police are saying. They say they went through statement after statement. They even went through jail phone calls. And they say this is why tonight they believe that Mikhail Edwards, his wife, his mother and brother all allegedly played a role in the, di in the disappearance of Brianna Winston. I remember having her all the time when she was a baby, um, playing in her hair. It's small memories like this that Jasmine Walker is cherishing now more than ever before. The last couple of months has been hard. It's, I've had sleepless nights, just up worrying, just thinking like, where's Brianna? Her cousin, 23-year-old Brianna Winston, was last seen on March 16th, and now the Clayton County Police Department says they believe she was murdered by her boyfriend. It was malice murder uh, because it took some forethought. Police say her boyfriend, Mikhail Edwards, planned to kill her and eventually carried out that plan. Investigators say on March 17th, he went to Brianna's apartment where the two began arguing because he married another woman in secrecy. She had confronted him after learning about his infidelity to her. He choked her. From there, police say Mikhail put her body in a suitcase, drove to a man's house in Tennessee, burned her body, then the two men allegedly disposed of her remains on the highway and behind a church in a cemetery. Police say they weren't the only people who helped cover up her murder. It turned into a family affair. Police say Mikhail's wife gave him her car to drive to Tennessee. His mother and brother allegedly burned his shoes and a pair of gloves to conceal Brianna's murder. All three are now facing charges, but Brianna's family still feels helpless. I've just been crying every night because I wasn't there to help her. But now that she's been found and brought back home. I wasn't going to sleep until she was found. And I'm not going to give up until justice is served. Now the other man in Tennessee who allegedly helped burn Brianna's body was granted immunity in exchange for his confession. Reporting live in Clayton County tonight, I'm Tori Cooper. Atlanta News First. Criminal Investigations Division was made aware of a missing person case on April the 2nd, 2024. It was very suspicious. The Major Felony Unit Commander and her staff immediately began working the case. The case was ultimately concluded as a homicide. To solve this case, they used over 1,100 man hours, executed 26 search warrants, digital media forensics, search and rescue canines, bank records, social media sites, and good old fashioned police work. I want to thank the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation for the continued support and endless hours assisting my detectives in Tennessee last week. I'd also like to thank the Clayton County Sheriff's Office for quickly arresting all offenders in this case who were not already incarcerated. I'll now turn it over to Lieutenant Marbury, the Major Felony Unit Commander. I'm Lieutenant Marbury, uh, Major Felony Unit Commander at CID. So on April 1st, Brianna Winston was reported by her family as a missing person after they had not seen or heard from her um, since about March the 16th. On April 2nd, we assumed the investigation. It was myself, Sergeant Bice, Sergeant Teske, Detective Bryson, Detective Moore, and Detective Wright. Uh, we tirelessly worked to figure out exactly what happened to Brianna. So after employing several investigative measures and obtaining more than 20 search warrants, the investigation led us to Tennessee, where we found answers that left us uh, some happiness, but a lot of sorrow for Brianna. On Monday, March, I'm sorry, May 6th, we traveled to Tennessee and we were received uh, by the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations, who had on our behalf enlisted the assistance of other agencies, such as the TWRA, which is the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, and also uh, first responders within the Madison and Lauderdale counties. On May 7th, we started our search along a stretch of I-40. Uh, we were looking for the remains of Brianna. Uh, we eventually traveled to Gates, Tennessee, where we were met with a man who we believed would be able to tell us the full story on what we had been piecing together for approximately a month. 
after reaching uh, a dead end in pleading and, and uh, basically negotiating with him for the truth, as a last resort, we introduced the offer of a proffer through which he provided us with the intricate details uh, that not even we were expecting to hear. So we sat down with the Lauderdale County ADA, Ms. Julie Pillow, and uh, in that room, the man confirmed that on March the 17th, Michael Edwards arrived at um, his home and he took a suitcase out of the trunk, which contained Brianna Winston's body. Together, the two men placed the suitcase inside of a burn barrel located behind the home. They doused it with accelerant, lit a fire, and they kept that fire burning from the early afternoon until nightfall, uh, burning Brianna's body until she was just skeletal remains. Um, the man told us that uh, both he and Edwards used a shovel to uh, break down Brianna's bones in an attempt to speed up the burning process. And then once nightfall hit, Edwards took a portion of Brianna's remains, uh, which was he was to dispose on the side of the highway. Um, the man also told us what was left within the burn barrel. He took and transported to a church in Ripley, Tennessee. Uh, he took that barrel behind the church and dumped the remains in a cemetery in the wooded area. When we asked how uh, it was that Brianna was killed, the man was able to tell us that Edwards did go to Brianna's apartment uh, during the early morning hours of March 17th and in an argument where she had confronted him after learning about his infidelity to her, he choked her. Um, assisted by the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations, uh, as previously mentioned, we recovered Brianna's remains uh, at the cemetery and Prior to, uh, I'm sorry, prior to traveling to Tennessee, we interviewed several people. Um, Brianna Edwards Phillips is one of those people that we interviewed. Uh, there was also Ebony Anderson, who is the mother of Michael Edwards. She was interviewed as well. Um, on April 4th, we interviewed Michael. Uh, on the 5th, we interviewed Brianna. And during that interview, it was found out that she provided several statements that were verbal and written. Uh, they were false. And for that, we did take out an arrest warrant. Also learned in that interview on April 5th, uh, we found out that she had secretly married Michael on January 5th of 2024, and nobody was aware that the two uh, were married. So, um, Michael, on April 8th, we took warrants out on him. Uh, that was for aggravated stalking. That was related to a previous case um, where he was in violation of a stay away order from October 23rd, I'm sorry, 2023. It was October 13th, 2023. Uh, it was a domestic violence arrest um, that stemmed from an incident that occurred between him and Brianna. Um, and while reviewing jail calls, we heard Michael tell Brianna Edwards Phillips to burn a pair of shoes and a pair of gloves. Um, he also told her that his brother Keelan Wright would assist her with the burning of these items. Um, upon returning from Tennessee, uh, we were able to obtain arrest warrants for uh, additional arrest warrants for Michael. They were for aggravated assault malice murder, felony murder, tampering with evidence. Uh, warrants were con obtained for conspiracy to tamper with evidence related to Ebony Anderson and Keelan Wright because we found evidence through our search warrants that they had in fact burned the shoes and the gloves that Michael asked them to burn for them. Uh, we placed an additional warrant out for the arrest of Brianna Edwards Phillips after we found evidence that suggested that she had provided Michael with a ride to Tennessee, uh, and she also was very well aware of his whereabouts on March 17th while he was there uh, burning Brianna's remains. Are there any questions? Was did, uh, Brianna Phillips Edwards, did she go with him? You said provided a ride, did she go with him? No, she did not travel to Tennessee with him. She provided her vehicle as a, a, a mode of transportation. Michael did not have a vehicle. And the mother, what was her role in this? 
The mother, uh, we have evidence that suggests that she will, took a part in burning the items that Michael called and asked to be burned from jail on April 8th. I gotta ask you, it sounds like a family affair. Well, it, it turned into a family affair. Uh, it, he definitely looped everyone in uh, to this crime. What was the proper for the What the proffer. It is what a proffer is. Uh, the proffer is that he would provide information to the uh, district attorney's office in exchange for immunity from being charged. So he has immunity? He does. These are very gruesome allegations for what happened. I mean, is, that, is that the reason why the malice murder charge is malice as opposed to something else? It was malice murder uh, because it took some forethought. Um, it was not a, a crime that was committed in the, in you know the heat of passion. Um, there was malice. There was some intent there. Um, the option was to walk away. You have the option to walk away from arguments. How crucial was that jail call this investigation? Get everybody involved. Uh, all the evidence in this case is exceptionally crucial. Um, I don't think one piece outweighs the other. Uh, it all fits together to tie the puzzle pieces. How much information do you think Brianna Phillips knew? Like, was she, did she know the choking happened when it happened? Did she know, how, how early did she, did she know about all this? It is very hard to tell how much information she had. Everything uh, that we have spoken to her about uh, has led us to believe that it was a substantial amount of untruthfulness. Do y'all wish to say anything? No. Family does not want to speak. In closing, I do want to say that we are surrounded with family members here only because without them, we wouldn't have gotten where we were in some of the parts of this investigation. They filled in those gaps for somebody who wasn't around showing what their day-to-day -day routine was. And we were able to already show the day-to-day -day routine had stopped. So they were very crucial in it. And we've been with them the whole time. And we really appreciate their support uh, and being able to close this case for them. That's all we have. Thank you. Facebook conversation.